Karwar, a land of converging landscapes where the elements come together. The Western Ghats embrace the Arabian Sea, while the River Kali finds a home after a long winding journey, making this tiny strip of land a biodiversity hotspot. Like all coastal towns, fishing is the primary source of livelihood in Karwar. Fish, prawns, shrimps, rays and squids, a veritable list of marine life that originates from these rich waters is shipped around the world as seafood. But there's a prize catch here, the most important of them all, crabs. One of the many places where many of us encounter crabs is here. From crabs plucked out of the riverbed with bare hands to large trawlers that cast out massive nets, we tread into the world of crabs in many ways. The journey of a crab from the coast to the kitchen is a long one and touches many lives. But how much do we really know about the life of a crab? Devbagh is an island off the coast of Karwar. It's a popular tourist destination and the Jungle Lodge's property is aptly located on it. Strolling under the tall Kashwarina trees, it's hard to miss the sleepy resident spotted owlet and the ever-vigilant white-bellied sea eagles. The soft white sand beach faces west and offers spectacular views at sunset. Settle down on the beach and you will suddenly notice many pairs of eyes watching you warily from little burrows in the sand. Meet the ghost crabs. They blend so well into their surroundings that they could be a crab one inch away and you'd never notice. They are often seen foraging on the beach at dusk their quick movements making them seem ghost-like, hence the name Ghost Crab. Ghost crabs come in several colors, forms and sizes. Most of them have eyes and stalks that allow them to see 360 degrees simultaneously. However, they are unable to see directly overhead. They often fall prey to birds even though they can run very fast, at speeds of up to 10 miles per hour. But they won't go down without a fight. Ghost crabs are often seen sprinting to the sea to stock up on oxygen. When water washes over their gills, the air sacs in there absorb the oxygen from the water. When they are not running, they are digging. They spend a large part of their time tunneling through their burrows. Wind brings in a lot of sand and the waves pay an occasional visit, so housekeeping is necessary. They are quick and agile and disappear as quickly as they appear, true to their name. Devbagh is in the transition zone between the river and the sea, an estuary where River Kali joins the Arabian Sea. The area is subjected to waves and saline water from the sea and fresh water from the river. Tides are the reason this entire ecosystem exists. Twice a day at high tide, this mix of fresh and seawater gushes into the shore, inundating the entire area. 
When the water recedes, it leaves behind rich nutrients in the sand. This is when they emerge. Soldier crabs. One by one, slow and steady, all over the mudflat. They hibernate from high tide to low tide every day in their burrow-like structures called igloos. These little architects rotate in the sand, forming a circular wall of sand pellets around themselves, and then seal the roof with the pellets. In the process, they trap a bubble of air in the igloo, which keeps them going till it's time to emerge again. As the tide continues to go out, more and more crabs appear. Tens become hundreds and hundreds thousands in no time. Soldier crabs have a short feeding window and are constantly on the move. They resemble an army on parade when they move together, which gives them their common name. The mudflat is soon a sea of pink. And the smooth seabed has been turned upside down. Soldier crabs feed on organic matter in the sand. Using their slender, long pincers, they pick up sand and bring it to their mouths to sift out any tiny food particles. They discard the remaining sand in a little pellet. These pellets show where the crabs have been feeding, as meanwhile, the crabs may have marched off a hundred meters away. Apart from feeding and grooming, their pincers have more roles to play. Small as they are, soldier crabs can get into ferocious fights. They use their pincers to ward off competition, take over a nice looking igloo, or simply fight. Staying exposed on the shore for hours makes them easy prey. Curlews, shanks, sandpipers, herons and miners walk on the mudflats to snack on the crabs, all through the low tide. Their only shelter is their igloo, and only defense is the safety in numbers. Even ghost crabs turn into opportunistic feeders when the crabs are out. Their feeding frenzy continues till the tide comes in. They find their spots, build their igloos, and retire for the day, lying in wait for the tide. Mangrove forests grow parallel to the shoreline in Karwar. They have aerial roots that help the plants breathe. Look close near the edge of the roots and you can see a horde of little creatures swinging white and orange patterns. They are the fiddler crabs. And what they are swinging are their oversized claws. All males have one large claw and the hand of the claw alone is larger than the crab's body. The female's claws are both the same size. The movement of the smaller claw from ground to mouth during feeding explains the crab's common name. It looks as if the animal were playing the larger claw like a fiddle. The elaborate wave of the large claw resembles a washerman bashing clothes in a rock, giving them their Indian common name, Dobi crabs. The other prominent feature is their long, slender eye. Shy creatures, at the slightest of threats, they bury themselves or run back into their burrows. But their eyes pop out like periscopes and they keep a lookout. To impress the females, males stand guard at the mouth of their burrows, brandishing their large claw. A big claw means a big burrow and the odds of winning a female's attention goes up. Male crabs often get into fights, some territorial, some for a mate. Bigger the claw, 
easier to win. Like most crabs, fiddler crabs do find their food in the sand. A teaspoon of mud from a mangrove contains billions of bacteria and organic matter. One of the reasons why the mangroves are their home. Day after day, tide after tide, they filter all the edible detritus in the sand and the aerial roots. With such diverse habitats, Karwar is home to several other species of crabs. The rocky beach is home to Grapsus crabs. The mangroves, on the other hand, are also inhabited by Sesarma and purple crabs. The shores are decorated at low tide by little sand mobler crabs. Moon crabs and mud crabs are sought after by fishermen and are found all around the estuary. What fungi are to a forest, crabs are to a coastal wetland. They feed on the dead and restore life in the process. Providers of food and air, crabs are truly the lifeline of Cardwell.